Welcome to this edition of Meet the Mustangs. Joining us today, wearing his softball hat as head softball coach, Scott Woodard. Scott, welcome back. Happy New Year, Michael. Same to you. Well, you, you caught your breath over the last couple of weeks. And... It's, I'll tell you what, Mike, it's been a great break. You know, in 15 years of this job, I don't know that I've ever had three weeks where we didn't have a game or something going <laughs> yeah. on. So, you know, I think God has a sense of humor, and so he dumped nine inches of snow on my softball field, so I had something to do for the last week. <laughs> well, it, it has been a different winter. How, how does that impact the softball practice? There's some things you can do inside. I, I think, you know, Mike, we get a lot done, obviously, with – technique and mechanical work inside. Yeah. There's, we got plenty of space here on campus with the intramural gym and Graham gym and right. the racquetball courts, we utilize those to be able to hit in. Um, so you, you can get a lot of mechanical stuff and, and in some aspects that's probably good because right. it makes you focus on doing things, little, little things daily mm -hmm. as opposed to the big picture and team stuff. And um, so, and, and obviously the temperature outside and the daylight and the yeah. class schedule. So by five o'clock, you got to be done. Right. And I don't get the kids a lot of times till 3.30 or after because of classes till 3.15. So there's a lot of limitations right now. And I think, you know, you, you, you got to just try and get as much done on the weekend as you can and hope for as much good weather as you can. And um, obviously we can do all of our infield and pitching stuff in Graham gym, or in the intramural gym because it's yeah. big enough. Um, outfielders will get slighted a little bit, but, um, you know, it, well, if the pitchers are doing their job, not a lot of balls are going to be hit to the outfield. <laughs> that's that's what we all hope is that we get you know we get enough work done you know in the infield in our pitchers that mm -hmm. we don't have to do a lot of that. But um, it, it's a fifty fifty deal. I think you know the kids get bored and it becomes monotonous when you're yeah. inside and you know trying to find the gym time because general student use and basketball practice and tennis once in there if it yeah. snows and you know so does golf and you know well. We're all trying to use the same space, so it becomes a little more tedious, but, um, you know, we also need to get used to playing in crappy weather because yeah. a lot of where we go isn't real nice this time of year. <laughs> yeah, you're not going south very often. <laughs> uh, yeah, we try and schedule as much February non-conference, yeah. you know, we open up in Phoenix, we go to Vegas the next right. weekend and try and make sure we get those games in, but the third weekend we're in Amarillo, we're home the last weekend, and, you know, uh, I can't even imagine what March 4th in Alamosa is going to be like. So yeah, I would like <laughs> I'm trying not to look that far ahead on the schedule, but I do notice we're playing in Adam State yeah. on March 4th. So well, let's talk about the RMAC. A lot of new coaches in the RMAC. How do you expect that to pan out? You know, Mike, when we came back into this conference, obviously my first thought was that softball wasn't going to be as strong in the RMAC because it's mm -hmm. a tough sport to play. Yeah. Um, what I found out through the last three years is that. The ADs in this conference have put a lot of money into softball to make them competitive, and it's very. Obviously, Metro State finished last year third yeah. in the country. Um, it, Mesa's been to the World Series. We've been to the World Series. Um, this, it was a transition year, there's no question. You know, some coaches got some other jobs and some better jobs. Yeah. and um, So it, it'll be an interesting, interesting year. Mesa and Adams State, to me, are both loaded with tons of talent, didn't lose anybody. Um, the, you know, the other division I don't know as much about, obviously, even though we play them all the same. You know, I just don't look at that side as much because, you know, we, we play them when we play them and that's the way it goes. But knowing the West a little bit better and knowing the people that are coming back, obviously Fort Lewis has a new coach, Mines yeah. has a new coach, and Metro has a new coach. So, um, and those are transition teams for the most part, although Mines was fairly young, you know, they Everything about Colorado School of Mines right now, facilities, everything. Yeah. You know, I mean, they've they've committed so much in the last five years to athletics. And if you just look at their women's programs, they're they're at the top of the conference in every sport. So it it will be an interesting year. But I think every at this point in time in Division Two softball, everybody there are a lot of schools in this country that have committed more scholarship money, more coaches' salaries, better facilities. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of good people out there. You don't just show up like we yeah. did 14 years ago where I thought we won a lot of games because we had better people and we coached better. It's not that way anymore. Coach, uh, fans come out to watch the games. Any players in particular they should watch or look for? Uh, this will be an interesting year, Mike, because it's a transition year for us, too. we got 12 new faces, um, and we're carrying 17, so that tells you I've only got five kids <laughs> that have been with me. And there are five that have been with me a couple years, so... Um, Caitlin Barnes is our marquee player. She always has been. Um, she broke the single season home run record last year with 17. Right. Um, she, 
you know, with any kind of year this year, she'll break the career record that Meredith held. And, um, you know, she, I, I knew two years ago when I got her that she could be that kind of player. I think every year I look for a difference maker uh, that has a chance to be an All-American. And, you know, with the four we've had previously, it's kind of played that way. And, you know, to me, she's the next one. She, right. she you know, she's a defensive player. She plays, you know, the thing I loved about her is that every second of the game, she plays full speed ahead. And it's not always right, but I don't have to worry about, you know, is she not giving me everything that she has? And, um, you know, we've got a couple kids, you know, that we'll, we're counting on that have come in here that have World Series experience, that have Division One experience, that, um, you know, give us a better chance, Sarah Burns and, and Brianna Robles in the circle to go with the kids we have back. And, um, you know, to me, just like you said, we got to learn, we got to pitch, you know, and yep. we, we've got to be able to get people out in the circle and, and not worry about scoring seven or eight runs a game because that's extremely difficult to do when you face people that pitch. And there's still enough good pitching in this league. I'd like to be able to know that if we score three or four, we got a chance. And this team's going to be good enough to do that. So, um, you know, health, just like yeah. every other sport here on <laughs> campus, you know, can we stay healthy right now yeah. through the season? Um, you know, the injury bug, the flu bug, the weather, you know, all those things play a, pack, a factor. And, We'll just see how it goes week to week. <laughs> yeah. Well, folks, check out WNMUMustangs.com. Find out when the Mustangs are playing near you. They'll be in Phoenix shortly, so it'll be a great time to go out and enjoy some great college softball. Coach, good luck in the upcoming season, and thanks as always. Thanks, Mike.